Hello everyone in the Department of Biochemistry, Faculty of Medicine, Chemai University. You are now watching the standard core principles of laboratory safety, biosafety, and biosecurity video to remind everyone working under the safety environment. Surely, the objective of this lecture are to review the standard knowledge of laboratory safety, biosafety, and biosecurity to remind everyone that working in the laboratory is risky, not only at yourself, but other as well. And to hope that you all follow the standard procedure as for your own discipline. Here is the outline of this lecture to begin with the hazards found in the laboratory, including physical, chemical, and biological hazards. We then continue with the characteristic of containment, especially by a safety cabinet. Next, the good practices in the laboratory and end up with, with a touch of biosecurity. We shall begin with the hazard found in laboratory. There are four classes of laboratory hazard, including physical hazard, chemical hazard, biological hazard, and radiation hazard. But here in this lecture, focusing only on the first three classes. Those hazards potentially pose risk more or less when you work in the laboratory. Therefore, we need to minimize those risks into acceptable degree. This paradigm indicates the degree of efficiency of each strategy control. We can see that the elimination is the most effective strategy to remain safety. However, it is impossible to eliminate all risks in the laboratory. Substitution is the second effective strategy to remain safety. This strategy is applicable in certain circumstances, not all. Engineering control is next to design safety environment during handling with hazardous objects you want to work on. Administrative control is another less effectiveness to assure that all people who is working on understand the risk and how to manage the risk appropriately. Interestingly, personal protective equipment or PPE like lab coats and gloves is the least effective strategy to deal with hazard. So you know working in the laboratory is risky and you need to be safe during your lab work. The question may raise, who is benefit from working under safety strategy? Of course, yourself, who work in the lab, is the primary target. So are your colleagues, the staff, and even your advisor? Your family members and close friends also get the benefit on that, as you may unintentionally carry the hazard with you to them. Moreover, Working under safety circumstances is also a benefit to the community, city, countries, the world populations, other creatures like pandas and color bears, as well as the non-creatures or environment like soil, air, and water resources. When you know there might be risk to the houses in the laboratory, the easiest way to communicate to others is to warn using symbols. This chart is the basic common symbols you all need to understand the meaning of them. Let's begin with the detail of physical hazards. To control major the hazard, the law command this physical factor to be controlled. Heat must be lower than 32 degrees Celsius. Light must be bright enough to work on its type of work like 300 up to 500 lux required for working in the office. Noise must be not louder than 85 decibel and the chair must be stable enough to work. 
It is suggested that a five-legged chair without portable wheel is the most suitable for working in the laboratory. Undeniably, there are many electrical equipment operating in the laboratory. Electricity chalk symbol must be placed on all those equipment. Heat generated from hot plate, water bath, or the crepe must be also worn at all times. Frozen damage like dry ice, liquid nitrogen, and even ice. Pressure equipment like cylinder tanks of oxygen and carbon dioxide and pump. Light source such as UV lamp, gamma ray, X-ray, and even microwave. Sharp material like braid, scalpel, needles, tips, and even broken glasses. And the noise form signification must be worn by the corresponding symbols. Basically, to work safely, electricity must be away from water, heat must be away from frozen equipment, protection with appropriate PPE under these houses is oblique. For example, suitable gloves to handle with hot and frozen stuff, goggle, face shield, spectacles must be put on against pressure and UV light. Likewise, sharp material must be correctly handled or disposed. Do not recap the uncapped needles. To protect your ears during sonication, ear plug or ear muff must be put on. Working under a radiation, the suitable protection must be addressed. Let's now focus on chemical hazards. All reagents used in the laboratory are chemical compounds which you need to be aware of their potential risks and hazards of them. You can find the full details of each chemical agent in the document called Material Safety Data Sheets or MSDS. Or you can be learned from your laboratory co-workers. The MSDS provides you all information about the chemicals and it is available online as international legislation. The information includes the name of the chemicals, the manufacturer's information, the hazardous ingredient, the physical and chemical characteristics, the fire and the explosion hazard data. There also be health hazard data, handling and storage, personal protection, toxicological information, ecological information, disposal consideration, transport information, and other information. You can also learn from the labels on the containers of the chemical as well. Again, you can also warn others with the potential hazard from the chemicals by these symbols which you need to know the meaning of each symbol. For example, the chemicals are environmental toxic, dangerous to health, reactivity oxidizing, irritant, respiratory toxic, compressive, flammable, corrosive, and explosive. Another way to provide the chemical hazard symbol is to use the International Fire Protection Association System, or NFPA, using the diamond diagram filled with different colors and numbers. The red mean flammable degree, the yellow mean chemically reactive degree, the blue means negative health effect degree and the white is for additional information. The number means the degree of each color factors ranging from 0 to 4, which is lowest to highest degree. For example, ethanol represented by 3 in red, 0 in yellow, 2 in blue, and dash in white, means that ethanol is quite flammable, no chemical reactivity, 
fairly hazardous to health, and there is no any other additional information to worry. Another example: hydrogen peroxide, represented by zero in red, one in yellow, three in blue, and OX in white, means that hydrogen peroxide is not flammable. No chemical reactive reactivity unless heating. Very hazardous to health, and it is an oxidizing agent. Chemical waste is the next issue when you use uh, the chemicals. You need to follow the MSDS and fill the information of your chemical waste in the s p l a y e system run by the university. You can directly contact PGF for further information before you start using new chemicals. Next, it is about biological hazards, including not only pathogenic microorganisms but also toxins, prions, natural as well as recombinant DNA, animals, clinical specimens, and cells or tissue culture. <laughs> Some of them are restrictively regulated by law, so you need to strictly obey the safety regimen, otherwise you're breaking the law. Based on the pathogenicity, severity, spreading, and available treatments of the microorganisms, there are four risk group of them. Risk group one is non-pathogenic in healthy adults, such as Lactobacillus species and certain cell lines, while risk group two is pathogenic but mild symptoms. When well therapeutic intervention available, such as E. coli as well as certain cell lines as well, risk group three is pathogen with severe symptom leading to death, but still available therapeutic intervention, such as HIV, b a c i l l u s a n t r a s i t tuberculosis, and SARS-CoV-2, which is um, currently. Uh, pandem- uh, pandemic around the world. Like the severity of the risk group three, risk group four has no therapeutic intervention yet, such as Ebola virus and c r i m e n c o n g o hemorrhagic fever virus. To work with those risk, biocontainment is required. The biosafety level, known as BIOS BSL, is designed for the biocontainment. Like the risk group, there are four level of BSL related to the risk group. BSL one is the minimum for risk group one related work, while BSL two is designed for working with risk group two as well as risk group one. BSL 3 is for risk group 3, risk group 2, and risk group 1 work. Why BSL 4 is safe for all risk group? However, to operate BSL 3 and BSL 4 require absolutely high cost. Therefore, suitable BSL and risk group is taken for consideration in all budget limited organization. Let's see a brief detail of each BSL. BSL 1 must be comprised of lab bench, sink, eye wash station, foam hood, emergency shower, first aid kit, separated luggage bags, and must be operated under standard laboratory safety with appropriate PPE. Autograph is only available somewhere. In addition to BSL 1 BSL 2 must be limited access of people. Clearly show the biohazard symbols. There must be on-site con- documentation of standard operating procedure or SOP, and b i o s a f e t y cabinet class 1 and or class 2. The ventilation must be directional, which is the air coming in and out. The laboratory must be controlled. In only one direction, there must be a designated press for decontamination. 
while the autoclave must be in an access area. In addition, the details of emergency contact and the head of the laboratory must be addressed under the bio hazard symbol. There is an extra BSL is recognized as BSL2 enhanced, which is a higher safety level than BSL2, but much less than BSL3. In order to work with certain pathogens, classifies as risk group 3 star, such as HIV, Y-type tuberculosis, but not drug-resistant tuberculosis. Likewise, in addition to the BSL-2, BSL-2 enhanced PPE is followed with BSL-3, and the venue must be in a separate like compartmentalized area. However, it is restricted by the culture volume not exceed three not exceed thirty milliliters in each experiment. BSL three in addition to BSL two, people who work in BSL three must be fully licensed with special PPE, such as the COVID-19 lab coat and N95 mask. Very less strict access through double doors, as well as double door autoclave must be available on site. BSC class 2 or class 3 must be presented in the negative pressure of the air ventilation with self-decontamination. To operate the BSL3 monitoring camera must be on and you need to have the body to operate at all time. You can't work alone there. There should be a BSL3 venue in CMU soon. There is a field in Thailand, I guess. BSL4, in addition to BSL3, BSL4 must be isolated into a remote area and separated buildings, changing cloth before in and out the restrictive place, and shower must be done on exit. BSL3 is compulsory. PPE suit is special with their own oxygen tank. It is not allowed by law of Thailand to operate BSL4 in this country. Sometimes people misunderstood to fix an idea only low risk group. Think about it if you handle the low risk group in high volume, it is always considered as higher risk. Risk group 1, which is more than a thousand liters of the liquid or 200 kilograms of the solid, is considered as a large scale. Likewise, this group 2, which is more than 10 liters liquid, or 1 kilogram of solid is considered as a large scale as well. Toxin of which the LD50 is less than 100 nanogram per kilogram body weight is also considered as a large scale. Spatial safety procedure must be implemented in addition to the small scale. To work safely under safety containment, safety cabinet has been designed and classified into three main types. Those are laminar flow clean bench, bio safety cabinet or BSC, and chemical fume hoods. Starting with the chemical fume hood, which works to protect the person from the volatile chemicals, it is designed to protect neither the environment nor the sample. In the case of laminar flow clean bench, although the starlight air is designed to pass through the HEPA filter down to the working area, the person and the environment are not protected during the duty. Only the sample is protected. Unlike the full mood and laminar flow clean bench, 
by a safety cabinet or BSC has been designed to further protect the personnel, the environment, and other samples to be handling. There are three classes of BSC, which are class 1, class 2, and class 3. The BSC class 1 is designed to protect the person who works with and the environment as the HEPA filter is used to filter out the flow now. BSD class 2 can be further classified into type A and type B, which is extended into A1, A2, and B1, B2, depending on the airflow rate, downflow rate, and the percentage of air recirculation or exhaustion. I'm not going to go through the detail of this. But type A is unable to handle with vaporing chemicals, while type B is capable of, but just in a small amount. All type of BSC class 2 protect sample, personnel, and environments. BSL class 3 is absolutely unique as it's designed to compartmentalize from everything by gas tight of the negative pressure, of course, a uh, HEPA filter must be in use for both inflow and exhausting air. It contains attached long sleeve gov. We are not allowed to have this BSL class 3 as it is for risky for pathogen, which is prohibited by Thai law, not to work with it. Now you know the pictures of the safety principles. Let's get along well with the laboratory good practice. All of these is raised for your own health and safety issues during your work in the laboratory. It must be kicked off and attached by your own primarily. If you have beautifully long hair, make sure you tie it back properly. Lab coat or lab gown must be primarily worn. It must be follow the standard as long sleeve with wrist fit and it must be used in separated area, not all in one. For example, blue lab coat for lab A while pink lab coat for lab B. Not mix it up. In addition, regular hat laundry is a must with separated from normal household laundry. No shorts, slipper, and accessory, but you must wear jeans or trousers and toe cover shoes instead. Goggles and fair shoes are required as certain circumstances, like the glove, which you should select the match tie of the glove with you will. It is strongly recommended that glove must not be worn outside the lab. However, if necessary, glove on one hand and you touch the environmental stuff with the glove free hand, like the door knobs, elevator buttons, telephone, etc. To transport the laboratory sample or regarding the materials, they must be in a sealed, robust container. Please beware of that two container layers or three container layers are required to transport within the same building or across the building respectively. Many people love spending time on your own, so they love putting on the headphone, in worst case recent the Bluetooth headset. It is not recommended as for your own safety. You can hear when some accident emerges by yourself or by people screaming. So you can, you could have be able to run away from the hazard. As I said in the last few slides, that glove must be correctly selected. Plastic glove is not suitable in all kinds of lab work. Latex and nitride are used in the change break, while neoprene is for handling corrosive chemicals. 
No food nor drinks allowed in the laboratory area. Your nails must be kept short and blunted. It is said that the best day of the week to have a manicure is Friday. Microwave, fridge, and freezer in the lab must be used only for the lab only. Do not use with your own food. And try not, and try to avoid touching your face or other face as well. It is said that your hand is very useful, but harmful as well. Another issue in the lab all around the world is the labeling of your own repair agents. You normally do with two brief details like this: two modium, two molar sodium acetate. Is this enough? Definitely not. Here is the full details of labeling, and I would like to encourage you all to take this format into practice. Chemical names, concentration, pH, who did prepare it, and when it prepared. And involving sign or symbol are all recommended if you can do. Foam hood is not the place to store chemicals or equipment. The space must must be always clean and free at all times. Fridge is another equipment that a lot of people neglect to store flammable chemicals like. Pentane, benzene, and saline is not allowed in non-spark-proof fridge. Spark-proof or explosion-proof fridge is recommended for those chemical instead. To operate BSC for your own safety, you need to assign which area is green zone, working zone, and dirty zone. Do not block the inflow air by placing stuff on the inlet space. Very importantly, do not heat or flame inside the BSC, as it interferes the laminar flow as well as potentially damage the HEPA filter. Like foam hood, do not store or stuff inside the BSC. Using centrifuge. You need to keep in mind that balancing and centrifugation is like a diamond leaf. Balance must be done across the center of spinning in symmetrically. Like this diagram, green balancing is correct, whereas the pink one is incorrect. The white gray diagram here is applicable too. Don't forget to tightly close the lid to sequester the area in case of accident. Separate lid from each top must be also tightly closed. In the case that something wrong happening with the centrifuge during spinning of the machine, you can turn the switch off. Do not push the brake or pause button, as it may affect to the rotor. After it is off. Wait a little while to make sure that rotation is completely stopped, and further wait for another thirty minutes to let the settlement of all dispersing chemicals or samples. After that, you can open the lid and clean your mess. You can imagine now why the lid is so important. Otherwise, you might need to disintegrate all parts of the centrifuge for cleaning. Lock books is provided with nearly all instruments. This is for recording the workloads of each instrument, not for detecting someone to responsible. Please fill your information before and after the utilization of each instrument. It quite makes sense of our lock book is fully filled by user. And one day it is broken, so the reason is that it has been used heavily. New machine or increasing number of this instrument is considered by the executive staffs. Consequently, it is also informing that the instrument is being booked and used by whom. It is also a good evidence for maintenance 
to ask the last user for its disorders. Waste is another big issue for laboratory. Waste is the lab in the laboratory can be categorized into general waste, which are able to dispose in the black bag. Animal cadavers or animal organs must be collected in a yellow bag and sent to incineration. Infection, infection waste like a clinical specimen, anything exposure to the specimen must be in the red bag and sent for incineration as well. Both of yellow and red bag contain biohazard symbols. In case of cell culture media, decontamination with 0.5% sodium hypochlorite at final concentration for 30 minutes is a must before discarding through sink drainage. Similarly, use cell culture plate, pipettes and well plate must be decontaminated as so the media. The liquid is discarded and the objects are collected in the red bag for incineration after that. The used gloves are disposed in either separated red bag or with other contaminated objects for incineration after that as well. However, if you deal with microorganisms, decontamination by other grape is a must prior to, prior to placing it into the red bag for incineration. Under the safety circumstance, accident can happen occasionally like chemical exposure. If you inhale the toxic vapor, dust or gases, you need to get yourself out of the working area to get the fresh air immediately. If it is spilled onto your cloth or your lab coat, take all contaminated items off and put on the clean ones. If your skin is on direct contact with it, watch with running tap water in copious amounts. The chemicals spilled into your eyes, wash your eyes immediately using eye watch station or eye watch apparatus. If you ingest the chemical, rinse your mouth with copious water and immediately consult the physician. Do not try to put yourself vomiting. What if you got puncture with infected needles and animal bites? They ask you to stop the working immediately, watch the puncture cut or scratch with soaps and tap water. Do not try to squeeze the wound to let the blood leak get. It helps less, but worse if it is a blood-borne pathogen. Before you start the work in the laboratory, please directly consult with your advisor whether you need a specific training by some people, whether you need specific PPE for the research there, and whether you need specific vaccination. I strongly recommend that all kinds of minors and major accidents must be officially reported to the department and I ask you to record as much as detail of the accident and keep it in the file of accidental report in your lab as well. This might directly guide us to reconsider the SOP to adjust it appropriately. Remember, you will not be able to blame by any accident happen. Oppositely, you will be much considerate. Fire, which is a big issue, no one wants it to happen. To catch the fire, there are three factors called fire triangles, consisting oxygen, heat, and fuel. There are five types of fire, depending on the sources of the fuel on fire. Type A fire is from natural material like woods, papers, and textile. Type B fire 
is from flammable liquid like engine oil and crude oil. Type C fire is from flammable gas like propane and butane in the LPG gas. Type F fire is from cooking oil and fat. And the electrical contact fire is when fire is parked by electricity shock. To know each type of fire is benefit for selection and suitable fire extinguisher, which made from various substances. For example, type A fire can be extinguished by all fire extinguisher except carbon dioxide. Type B fire can be extinguished by foam, ABC powder, and carbon dioxide but not by water and wet chemicals. Type C fire can be only extinguished by ABC powders. Similarly, type C fire can be only extinguished by wet chemical, while electrical contact fire can be extinguished by ABC powder and carbon dioxide. In addition, small fire can be extinguished by fire blanket to cover the area of the fire, and that's it. However, the vast area of fire, you need to evacuate first of all. Fire report must be officially done to the department as a record in both small and vast area of fire. Well, we come to the last topic of this lecture, is to a little touch to biosecurity. As I mentioned, by safety is for preventing the harms of sample to human creatures and environments. In contrast, biosecurity is for preventing the harms of human to abuse the samples. This may be seen in the scientific movies that pathogenic microorganisms are used as a biological weapons. To make sure that our sample is safe, your laboratory space must be restricted to access from other people who do not directly involve with your laboratory work. Not welcome all at all times. Only authorized people can access through the space of the samples, which is securely stored. You can arrange by locking the storage area cabinet of fridge at all time. Name tag must be present upon working, a 24-hour CCTV monitoring, and or hiring the well-trained security card. Sorting in your laboratory space can also help to improve biosecurity issues. Free zone is where everyone can access through. Protected zone is where all the staff is able to access through. Limited zone is where the staff who works in the laboratory can access through. An exclusive zone is where the staff who is the head and the head assistant of the laboratory can access through. Finally, we hope you will be safe from the laboratory hazards during working with us. Again, safety can be originated from your own discipline. Start from yourself. Thank you very much for watching.